These woolsiers and flannel flowers thrive in these nutrient poor sandy soils. They've adapted to these conditions over thousands of years, which is why growing local native plants is great for your garden. But what about trying to grow fruit trees and tomatoes in sand? Well, our very own sandy soil whisperer, Josh, has some great ideas to help you get the most out of sandy soil in your garden. The first challenge with sandy soil is that it tends to be hydrophobic. And what that means is that water beads on the surface and runs off rather than soaking through. It's water repellent. Hydrophobia is caused by organic matter breaking down and coating the sand grains with a waxy substance. It's more problematic with sandy soil because the grain size is large with a small surface area compared to silt or clay. So the particles are easily coated. The first thing to do to address hydrophobia is apply a wetting agent, which helps to break down the waxy coating around the sand particle, helping water to penetrate evenly. I like to do this when preparing a bed for planting, which ensures uniform wettability, helping with good root establishment. It's best to use an organic humic acid based product because the surfactant or detergent like products can harm microbial life in the soil and also aquatic life, including frogs. Another strategy for fixing hydrophobic soils is to add clay like kaolin or bentonite. It's this stuff, and it adds finer particles into the mix. An added bonus is that it also helps hold on to moisture and nutrients, which is perfect for sandy soil. You can apply up to two kilograms per square metre of clay, but it needs to be thoroughly worked through so it doesn't seal the top of your soil. I find it easier to apply a small amount each time I prepare for planting working it in lightly and improving the soil over time. This stuff is the secret source of turning sand into soil, compost. It also helps hold on to moisture and nutrients, but importantly, it's also the food for soil microbes, which are the drivers of soil fertility. I apply the compost about 30 millimetres deep evenly over the soil. Don't be tempted to overdo it or your soil can become gluggy and anaerobic, especially in winter. This stuff is homemade, so it costs me nothing. Now I've been working in clay and compost into these veggie beds for over five years now and I'm pretty happy that I've turned the sand into soil. Now that method's fine for the veggie patch, but there's other parts of the garden that need a different approach. Fruit trees need good soil, but digging around the base can often do more harm than good. So instead, I'll top dress with organic matter. Here I'm putting down a 20 to 30 millimetre layer of cow manure, which will gradually work its way into the top of the soil profile, building it up over time. I do this a couple of times a year. Any mild manure will do the trick, including sheep or horse manure. Mulch, mulch, mulch. Now I know it's a bit of a mantra on Gardening Australia, but for good reason. It helps regulate soil temperature, suppresses weeds, keeps moisture in the soil, and also protects soil biota from harmful UV. Essentially, it preserves all of that hard soil building work that you've been doing. Legume mulches like pea hay, lucerne, or shredded lupins like this one are great because they break down quickly and feed the soil. A final word on gardening on sandy soils. Look, pretty much anything's possible, but why make life hard for yourself? Think about growing plants that are well suited to growing on sand for the most part, like local natives and then focus your soil building efforts where it counts. Many years ago, I helped to plant out this native verge garden. The neighbours chipped in 
and so did a gardening hero of mine, Peter Cundall. He was not impressed with our local soil. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> oh, come on, you're faking it to impress me. You are. Nothing could possibly grow in this. It's pure sun. Well, it certainly will. For example, this beautiful rescued Xanthoria presii. In fact, all along this front verge, including both neighbours, three in a row, we're going to be creating a local native verge garden. 13 years on, and you can clearly see that the strategy of planting local natives that are happy in sand works. I mean, check out the Callistamon Kings Park Special, a terrific medium-sized tree. Or the Grevillea Chrysmifolia, a wonderful bird-attracting flowering shrub. And of course, the iconic Xanthoria prezii. But if you want to grow something slightly more exotic and productive well, you're going to have to improve your sandy soil.